Welcome everyone. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 14th of March, 2024. Uh, topics on the agenda, LTS, most recent LTS, Contributor Spotlight, Weekly, Google Summer of Code, Jenkins Community Awards, Version Documentation, Tutorial Revamps, and Sponsor Attributions. Anything else that needs to go on to the agenda? Nothing I can think of. Thank you, Mark. Okay. All right. And Ayush, I assume that you'll have some question or topics you want to address under Google, Google Summer of Code. And we'll we'll cover them there if that's all right. Sure. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. So the next long-term support release is coming. It will be a little less than a week from now, six days. And uh, the change log and upgrade guide needs to be reviewed and approved. And there are some changes in it that have been noted. And, oh, that's interesting. Okay, so this one, I'll have to look at it further. I'm not sure what how that would have gotten into 2.440.2. So because these two things didn't change in that release, so I'll have to look at it more closely. Um, any questions or comments on the long-term support release that's upcoming? No, thank you. Okay, next topic then is the Contributor Spotlight, uh, published about a week ago for Stefan Speaker. And we can see it here. It was published on the 6th. Our next publication will be next week. So um, the Let's see, six plus 14 is 20 on the 20th. And congratulations, it will be Bruno Van Ochten. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Bruno, I, I assume you have reviewed and approved? Yes, I uh, have reviewed and approved uh, last week, I think. All right. And other spotlights are will be, will be created after Kevin returns. Mm hmm from vacation. Great. Thank you. And thanks, Bruno, for your contributions to Jenkins. Thanks very, very much. Welcome. My pleasure. All right. Jenkins Weekly 2.449 has released. And this one highlights a new feature of the changelog, thanks to Daniel Beck. Notice that this is showing one and only one changelog. Now, if I go to the download page, I can still see all the changelogs here. So 449, 448, they're all here. But this permalink to the entry gives me exactly one on a dedicated page. Makes it a lot easier to see a single page. The same thing applies for the stable, stable releases, the LTS, where if I click this one, I see exactly and only 2.440.1. Special thanks to, to Daniel Beck for the work to do that. I love how it feels. And reminder that Jenkins uses a mirror system. And one of those mirrors, unfortunately, is down. Let's see. Oh, I take it back. It's back. Oh, this is great. Mm -hmm. I love live, <laughs> live data. This mirror was down Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday while its operating system was upgraded. But obviously, it's back now. And this is 2.448. Let's see if they've already completed the synchronization of 449 this weekly. And they have. So they have obviously resynced. Very good. So thanks very much to the Oregon State University Open Source Laboratory. They host that for us. The other one of their mirrors, this NYC mirror, will be down soon for, again, a, an upgrade of operating system. All right, was down and is now back. Anything else on that weekly release? Uh, no, thank you. But I think there is another mirror about to be up for Jenkins, I think, in the coming weeks or so in Romania, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, there are several new, there are a few new, mir new mirrors proposed or in progress, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And if we look at that page, we can already see, I think, one of them, uh, this one. Oh, and it's now live. Good. Okay. 
So mirror.freediff.org is in Singapore, just like Savannah is. So if we look over here, if we zoom in really close, we should see, yes, there's number nine in Singapore. And now where is number eight? I don't remember where. Well, number eight is moon. not visible on screen here. So I'm not sure where it's hiding, but... Number eight from Servana is definitely in that at that same rough distance, right? Mm -hmm. They are both somehow in Singapore <laughs> within a few kilometers of each other. Oh, there, oh, that's yeah. why. Oh, wow, so close. Yeah, so and and kind of exciting that we've got two, so we th that will more evenly spread the load. Mm -hmm. from places like India, right? Instead yeah. of just being served by the one at Servana, we've now got two that will be reachable from India. So much appreciated, very much appreciated. That's pretty cool. But we don't have any in India yet, nor near China, right? No, no, we have two, We have one in China, Tsinghua oh, University. Cool. And we may, and yes, and there are certainly other sites that are mirroring, but are not subscribed to our mirror network yeah, okay. in China added and it was i forget what the name of that one was oh free free diff that's right in singapore and then uh two have been proposed for romania yeah and we'll we'll see how that goes it's really great to spread the load the bandwidth demands around the world okay next topic or anything else on weekly Okay, Google Summer of Code. So Ayush, was there something you wanted to ask? March 18th is the opening of submissions to Google by co potential contributors. The the they it will close, I believe, isn't it early April? I think so. So a period of roughly two weeks where applications can be submitted. Um, mentors are evaluate are reviewing and commenting on proposals, right? On draft proposals. Mm -hmm. So submit draft proposals through uh, the Google form listed in the Gitter channel, right? And that gives us a link to to review the document. Yeah. So the reviews. I'm reading uh, uh, Alisa's post on committeejenkins.io. So uh, the deadline to submit the draft proposal for review is March twenty second. Ah. Okay. Good. So that that's challenging. Be all right. So let's let's find that one. We're, we're not in a hurry to uh, submit to Google yet. Okay. Uh, I don't know what they have to, I can't remember what applicants have to do. I think it's just something that says, oh, I'm part of the GSOC, I'm a no, potential no, they, contributor. At least last, no. time, last time they had to submit a PDF of their proposal. Already, okay. Right, so, so at least as far as I know, it's, but we want to do the reviews of the draft proposals in Google Docs, and that's what's being coordinated as far as I know through this Google form. So you said that Alyssa had posted. Yes, uh, that it, we have to, uh, contributors have to post their draft proposal for review before March, March the 22nd. Okay. All right. So March 22. Great. So I'll check with Alyssa. I've, I, I'm not sure I've got access. Uh, Mark is not sure that he has access to the sheet with the Google doc with the proposal links. I'll share I've got it an for old you. one. Oh, that would be great if you could, Bruno. Of course. All right. Anything else on Google Summer of Code? Uh, yeah, I have one doubt. So basically, uh, for the reviewing the pro proposal for draft proposal so we is there any kind of a maximum limit that a uh, maintainer can do with a draft proposal 
So you're asking, is there an upper limit on the number of on the number of lines or pages in the proposal? So uh, kind of how many times a mentor can review? So one or two, three. Oh, oh, wait a sec. Okay, so your question was, is there an upper limit on the number of, of projects that a mentor will ment will act as a mentor on? Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, yes. So uh, there isn't one enforced by that uh, enforced by Google. However, there is one that we have in been enforcing in years past. So uh, we we have limited ourselves to one lead mentor to to lead mentors serve a single project. So meaning, Mark Waite, let's use a very specific example. Mark Waite will lead, be lead mentor, lead mentor for one and only one project. Did that answer your question, Ayush? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so-, so I have one. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, I, thank you so much. So I, I have one more doubt. So in the last year we discarded Two, uh, two projects also due to the unavailability of the mentors. Like, uh, so is there, uh, did Jenkins uh, do, had done some kind of improvements in this year so that we don't over uh, face this kind of problem? So yes, so we what we've done is done what we did last year, which is uh, mentors have been recruited. recruited and uh, clearly identified, and let's call it lead mentors, right? Lead mentors have been recruited and clearly identified. Um, and we've stated that, that a lead mentor will have only one project. Yes, um, and if I read correctly, I think Chris is noted as a lead mentor for more than one project. Mm -hmm. So, of course, one of these projects will have to be abandoned. Right, so so Mark and Chris are both listed as potential lead mentors for more than one project, right? And And the reality is, only one of those projects will be selected. Now, the, the challenge is, okay, which one will we select? Uh, Mark, at least I know what Mark will do. Mark will look at the project proposals and select the one he thinks has the, the most benefit for the Jenkins project, the most interest for me, and the most, uh, the best chance for success. So, so the, yep. the yes, Ayushu, you choose a project, submit a proposal for it and there is still a risk that your project is not selected because the lead mentor looks at yours and says no this other thing was more more important to me or more valuable to me or a better proposal okay that's good thanks so much uh-huh yeah uh, lead mentor is a heavyweight role is a heavy role and requires lots of time Right. Oh, it's, yes. <laughs> we're looking at typically we're looking a full day a week. So eight or more hours a week that ends up being demanded from a lead mentor. And that's an awful lot when you're employed full time. Did that did you have other questions, Ayush? Mm, no, thanks so much. OK, great. Bruno, was there anything you wanted to highlight on Google Summer of Code? Uh, no, I think you said it all. I know it's a pity to see some projects not being selected in the end, even if they are really important for the community. Um, but that's one of the rules. You have a definite number of mentors. You have a definite number of slots for the Google Summer of Code. So you have to choose. And yes, it's painful to choose, but you have to. Mm -hmm. That's part of the game. Thank you. Thanks very much. Next topic then, Jenkins Community Awards. Uh, Alyssa Tong announced the the nomination, the opening of nominations. Nominations have now closed, and the uh, the the award possibilities: most valuable contributor, 
Most Valuable Advocate, and Security MVP. And there's a voting form available here. And there is also a voting form for all the CDF awards. So CDF has a broader group of awards. The Jenkins Project presents three awards. And then CDF has others like the one Kevin's nominated for, which is Top Documenter. Voting closes in less than a week. And, and yes, they will, they are checking. You only get to vote once because you have to authenticate to the, uh, to the voting system. And yes, we know that means your ballot is not secret and we accept that. Okay. Anything else on, on Jenkins community awards? No, just don't forget to vote for Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree. Don't forget to vote for Kevin. Kevin's an excellent candidate. I've looked at the three candidates for that award, and I think Kevin's the best choice. So very good. Ooh. Next topic then is version documentation for Jenkins.io. This is a Google Summer of Code project from last year that is still being evolved and developed. Um, the We've got a delay on the infra team um, is busy with, with other items that need their attention. And uh, we're we're we we're delighted to see the continuing progress. Vandit Singh is the lead developer, and Chris Stern is the lead mentor, and Kevin Martins is a key reviewer. So thanks to thanks to everyone involved in that, it, it's it continues to look quite promising. Any questions there? No questions. Just a, a comment. Uh, Van Dit Singh is also mentor this year for ah right. GSOC. Yeah, and we like that. We like it when a when a a GSOC contributor from a previous year comes back and assists as a mentor. I've had help from Git plugin GSOC contributors with later get plug-in projects as mentors. Yeah, and I think Chris is in previous uh, GSOC contributor, right? Yes, Chris is, that's correct. All right, next topic then, uh, tutorial revamps. So Bruno, why don't you give us an overview here? Oh, yes, it's also a GSOC 2023 uh, follow-up. In fact, with uh, Ashuta Saxena last year, we worked on um, a way to rework on the existing uh, tutorials uh, that were making a heavy use of Docker and unfortunately Docker in Docker. And frankly, these tutorials were pretty intimidating uh, if you didn't know much about Docker. Uh, frankly, I knew a little bit about Docker when I started these tutorials and I was still intimidated. <laughs> so not an easy task. And I guess that some uh, newcomers to Jenkins were afraid to even start with Jenkins because of that. So we decided to do something uh, easier for end users uh, via the use of Docker Compose. So we created a repository into Den Jenkins Docs organization. And when the end user uh, clones the repo and just enters a command such as docker compose up minus D, Maven for the Maven tutorial, Python for Python, Node for Node, and so on, um, the tutorial then becomes much more Jenkins centric and the end user doesn't know to have to know much about Docker anymore, just how to install Docker on his machine and launch a Docker com compose command and bam, you've got a Jenkins controller and agent working to help you with the uh, tutorial. So we've done up to now Maven Python node, um, the um, multi-branch pipeline tutorial is in the review right now. And now I'm starting with the rewriting of the uh, install Jenkins on top of Docker tutorial, which may prove um, more difficult to, <laughs> to revamp. We'll see. Okay, so you're you're on the the big picture instructions, the ones we said at the very beginning were the worst example. Yes, indeed. Great. So far, so, so good, but. Um, We'll see if it becomes a catastrophe later on. 
That's that's excellent, Bruno. Thank you very much. Okay, so welcome, this is Michael. already in progress. Yep. Any questions for from others on on the tutorial rework and how that's progressing? Super. I think it's a great story to show one, how how Google Summer of Code has benefited us, and two, to highlight the very practical reality that many Google Summer of Code projects need extra work after the project has finished before they have given all their yeah. value to, to users. And we have some other examples like that. The GitLab branch source plugin was a Google Summer of Code project originally and is now in major production use in all sorts of places and has been through two or three different sets of maintainers in since its initial creation. And I think also the um, uh, plugin installation tool is also yes. a GSOC product. Yeah. That's a very good example. Plugin installation manager tool was a GSOC project that is used in every Jenkins container image. Very good. Okay, last topic I had was adding sponsor attributions. And this is this started with a request from JFrog that we add attribution to the downloads page for their involvement in the Jenkins project. Now, they're actually not a provider of the services that are on this page. These, these things actually come from our mirror providers, not from, not from JFrog. But the request is absolutely valid. We need a better way to highlight those major contributions, like what JFrog does, like what GitHub does, where like what Atlassian does, we rely on a donated Jira instance. We rely on major donations from GitHub to host our 2,500 and more repositories that are Jenkins. So, so this is a, an ongoing project. We're grateful to AWS for their donations, to DigitalOcean, to Microsoft, and recently to Ampere for donation of equipment to, that they've lent to us. So right now there's a governance board action item. We'll hear a report on it, on its status next week at governance meeting. Any questions there? Um, I don't know if it's a question or a comment, but we were discussing, I think it was last week with Kevin. Uh, I don't know um, about the hardware that we get, for example, for Ampere. So should we create um, a new type of um, sponsor or should we just uh, thank them in another way via a blog post or something like that? And for the very small donations of hardware, be it RISC-V, Pine64 and so on, I'm not so sure that they, these donations, even if they help us a lot, deserve to be listed in the um, sponsor uh, page maybe just a blog post would do the trick and frankly they even don't ask for anything right. uh, so yeah good good idea very good idea for sure certainly a blog post showing hey here's how we we're using this here's here's what we've what we've gained from it i think those are blog posts uh, sponsorship page one of the things that Basel has been investigating or considering is how do we assess the relative levels? Um, and one possible way to do it is cash value, right? So, but with cash value, then we have to look, what does it mean for an organization like JFrog or GitHub, where mm -hmm. we can't directly assign a cash value to what they're doing for us? They're supporting, in the case of JFrog, probably 100,000 Jenkins users, um, or the case of our Jira instance, we have 100,000 plus user accounts on that Jira instance. And so if it, we were buying that license, it would be enormously expensive. So those kinds of things, I don't know how to judge donations that are not pure cash donations. So it's, we'll see. Yeah. And for the servers, for example, uh, they are not a real donation uh, without mm. the deadline. Uh, I th think there is a deadline. Some is just loaners. So they... the um, servers are valued to quite a bunch of money. But as we don't get them forever, I don't know how to value them. But correct, and, and therefore that makes it all the more interesting. How do we deal with? How do we? How do we? 
properly and fairly recognize these various contributors, these various donors. Yeah, great. Any other topics we need to discuss today? Uh, nothing on my side, thank you. Ayush? No, thanks so much. Okay, and I was going to, okay, I can report a one added item. I was looking for this earlier. We've had 24 proposals, 23 proposals submitted for review to Google Summer of Code already. Yes, you're right. Last year, I think it was 54, but uh, contributors have until the 22nd of March. So, Right. We'll, well, and and I think the 54 was submissions we received from Google. So if someone submits something oh, to Google but doesn't to... submit to us for review, that that could easily boost that count finally right now this is these are the ones that are certainly the most likely to get our attention because when we review them we have a much better chance of of having the proposal tuned to be a, a better chance of success yes and some proposals were pretty good from the beginning but mm -hmm. for some of them um some things were missing so the review process is really helpful both for the jenkins project and for the contributor even if the project is not uh selected in the end the contributor the potential contributor will uh, know more about jenkins and the open source and everything that is linked to jenkins and gsoc so definitely if you hesitate don't hesitate no more uh submit so that we can uh, review your proposal Excellent. Thank you. I'm going to end our recording now. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mark.